Hey, this is Ben. This is the 30th stanza of the Art of Peace. And so let's begin. Can you feel your eyes? It's hard to narrow down because if I just say eyes, it's, it's pretty vague. Check this out. Sight picture. Now, sensation of the muscles behind the eyes. Bring the eyes to a single point. Open eyes to largest spectrum of view. Notice your feet. What's going on at your feet? Core, excuse me, pelvis. What's going on at your pelvis? Can you now move your feet? Move your feet from your pelvis? Now, as you're moving your feet from your pelvis, can you feel your core? Can you feel what's going on at your core? Starting at the fabric of your clothing, all the way down to maybe musculature, feeling soft tissue compressing and expanding. Now, heart space. Do something with your hands. Maybe put them together like a pyramid. Maybe make them into fists. Maybe connect the pointer finger and the thumb. Now see what that allows for your shoulder blades. Settling into the shoulder blades, you can settle in to your throat. Shoulder blades, kind of the bottom of the back of the throat, collarbones, bottom of the front of the throat, then the jaw. So think about the jaw as the top of front of the throat. Right ear is the top right of the throat. Left ear is the top left of the throat. Now from here, you're going to go in to your head. Notice what's inside your head in the form of thoughts. See if you can see thinking. Maybe in the form of language, language, it may be in the form of a visual. Now choose to go from the thinking capacity to the feeling capacity. Feel the top of your head. Now if it if it kind of doesn't stand out, if feeling doesn't present itself readily for you, go ahead and imagine the tip top of your head and then try to or so drop your chin just a little and try to get taller from the absolute center of your head and you might feel the sensation of up. Now you'll feel the sensation of up from more than just at your head so allow for your body to move as you get that sensation of up 
Now, choose to take a full breath. Exhale. Full breath again and notice, notice what you perceive about how full your breath is. Just exhale, let it go. Now look at the language. Let's look at the language of perceiving fullness. The language of perceiving fullness. So as you breathe in, notice how your body is expanding. Notice how it's expanding as you inhale. Don't worry about the exhale. Now, think about this language. See if this language resonates with you. My lungs are getting bigger. I'm taking a deep breath in. I feel the breath go in. I feel the breath pushing out. I feel the breath expanding. So as you breathe in, you can just say those words, I feel my breath coming in. You can say them out loud or you can say them in your head. I feel my breath coming in. I feel it expanding. Now, let's go into that statement a little more deeply. Let's, okay, so let's ask, well, what's expanding? So now as you breathe in, notice the front of your body. Notice the front of your body. Notice the back of your body. Notice the back of your body. Now, let's dig a little deeper. Let's dig a little deeper and we can use language to help you guide your awareness a little bit deeper. So now, as you breathe in, what I want you to notice is the expansion taking place at the bottom ribs. Now in your mind, watch your inhale and say, expand. In your head, say, expand into the neck and shoulder blades. And you just repeat it as you're breathing in. Now, now, as you breathe in, see if you can feel three-dimensionally. See if you can feel in a sphere, not just feel this or feel that. Now, now, as you breathe in, see if you can just be aware of whatever sensations around the breath are present. See if as you breathe in, you can feel the edges of the breath in. Where do you feel the edges of the breathe in? Now, change, change your alignment. So try, 
tucking your tailbone underneath you. So like you're like a dog pulling its tail underneath. You just sand your tailbone underneath. Now, once you're here, go quick through your body, feet, pelvis, core, heart, throat, brain, breath. And then when you're ready, notice the edges of the full inhale as you breathe. So same exercise, but it's a new environment. Notice the edges. Notice how it's different. And just let it go. Come back to alignment. Take your tailbone in the opposite extreme just to get a feel for the other edge. Now because you're going to be more present here, notice your feet as you send your tailbone back. Notice what happens in your feet as you send the tailbone back. Kind of like the way a dinosaur sticks out its tail. Kind of reaching through your rear. Sending the tailbone back. Take a full breath in. Notice the edges. And exhale, let it go. Now, come back to where you started. Come back to where you started with just alignment and breathing. And notice what breath feels like now. As you're taking deep breaths in, see if you can start to notice ideas or insights or expressions of language coming from your body, coming from your being. Could come in the form of memory. Flashes. It can come in the form of sensation. So as you're breathing, you can feel a sensation express. Story story might be coming up for you. Doubt. Now come back to sensation. Breath in, breath in. Don't even worry about exhale. Exhale happen naturally. Breathe in. Now just start to move any way you want. You can take your hands down any way you want. What's around you? What's available to you? As you're moving, as you're moving, see if you can allow the awareness you've created by being so present to guide your actions. Now, in the process of your actions flowing out of you, you are interacting with what it feels like to do whatever you're doing. If something feels expansive and full, if something feels short and tight, The practice is interacting with whatever shows up non judgmentally. From the clinical definition of mindfulness, it's to interact with whatever shows up non judgmentally.
Now, that's the idea. The idea. Whatever shows up, don't judge it. That's the idea. Now, in action. In action. It's best thought of as interacting with whatever shows up with friendly curiosity. Friendly curiosity is a natural mindset. It's the mindset of a child. It's the mindset of freedom. Whatever, whatever shows up, if it's met with friendly curiosity, you have a better chance of being aware of the greatest spectrum of whatever shows up if you meet it with friendly curiosity than you do with hierarchical analysis better than good and good as better than this better than that friendly curiosity includes that awareness includes that ex- that part of the spectrum but it isn't dominated by it simple as that Friendly curiosity includes it, includes that awareness. But it also includes every other part, every other piece of the spectrum. It doesn't isolate to one. That is where the power comes. That is, in essence, the power of love. The power of love. The way you train at that level, when you get there, starts with being able to interact with your body. If you can interact with your body with friendly curiosity, you have an infinite, infinite practice available to you. Infinite. There's nothing that's unavailable to you if you interact with your body with friendly curiosity. Friendly curiosity. The trick, the hard part, is getting to a place where you can see enough of what's going on to make it be interesting to your superpowered mind. Your mind is operating at a level that's more evolved than any other time in human history. Now, it's evolved in a particular direction, intellect. All that means, all that means is that time and awareness has been spent on evolving that aspect of our being It's been reinforced by our culture, it's reinforced by our language, it's reinforced as common sense. It remains all that. It remains all that. It remains a fucking glorious, 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 glorious expression of our humanity and how far we've come. That said, it's only one piece of the spectrum or one section of the spectrum. From the perspective of Armored Down, we talk about it as the idea awareness. We've evolved idea awareness. We evolved idea awareness, you could argue, from experience awareness. Experience awareness. So that's out of the idea and into the experience of it. We've evolved the idea of the awareness, the idea awareness from experience awareness. So the practice isn't the denial of one in favor of the other. Isn't this is better than that? It's just simply a recognition of what is. And because what is in our American culture Uh, Emphasis on idea awareness. 
the student has to acknowledge that with friendly curiosity. Meaning, my mind is active as fuck. My life is full of things that must be planned for and accounted for. My life is full of pressure. Edges. Okay. So, when deploying, when armoring down, when you engage your peace practice, what you're doing is just practicing not being dominated by one aspect of your mind. Practice evening everything out as best you can that moment. And then flow into what shows up. You flow into what shows up. And whatever shows up is just whatever shows up. What shows up could be like CrossFit, vicious and powerful and forceful. Interact with that with friendly curiosity. What shows up could be yoga, flowing like water, soft edges. What shows up might be like Tai Chi, Qi Gong, flowing like air. What shows up might be like motocross or firing weapons where it's like a intense, intense. What shows up might be really sad and slow and depressive. Whatever shows up, if you can interact with friendly curiosity, you have the potential to fall into mysterious or mystery awareness. Mystery awareness is all about what's to come. All about what's to come. And you, you just don't know. You can have an intention. But in the grand scheme of things, you don't know how things are going to turn out from one moment to the next. You can recognize consistencies and you can see smooth patterns, but you can't be certain. So, you can recognize that as the mystery. You can practice interacting with the mystery by going through what we've been doing. You tame the mind on the present. You train the mind through the body. You acknowledge your perceptions. You acknowledge your beliefs. And as you meet all that with friendly curiosity, you then move into a space that's totally present, totally unique, not bogged down, not bogged down by one particular view or another. When that happens, you become blended. You're blended with the form, you're blended with the feel, you're blended with the perception, you're blended with the beliefs. You can do that in any way conceivable. Certain experience have certain qualities that are different than other experiences. The notion that one is better than the other is a less effective way of thinking than this is part of a spectrum, there's an opposite to it, this feels like this, here, 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 and here. From this experience, you can interact with anything, anything, even rage, even hate. Part of the reason why you can interact with rage and hate is because they aren't given 
special treatment. They're acknowledged for what they are, but they're not succumbed to. It makes this practice so powerful. It's not redefining what it means to be good. It's articulating the path The 30th stanza of the Art of Peace. Each and every master, regardless of the era or place, heard the call and attained harmony with heaven and earth. There are many paths leading to the top of Mount Fuji, but there is only one summit, love. King, out.